Thank you for returning to Anthracite Horror Stories. And tonight I have a special video in which I'm going to go over just a few artifacts from the Glenburn, formerly uh, Glenburn Mine Tour, which was in Shimokin, Pennsylvania. And it was a forgotten, contemporarily forgotten, coal mine tour that was inside of an active producing anthracite mine. And I wasn't going to do a video on this, but I just picked up this brochure today. It came from, I believe, Massachusetts on eBay. So I'm pretty excited to open it up and share with the public because this brochure I'm sure there's not a lot of these left as these things weren't um, meant to survive until 2022 being from the early to possibly mid 60s but <clears throat> just to give a quick background on the Glen Burn Collar it was a huge operation Huge operation. I didn't misspeak um, in my One Knobles video where I talked about how it was a six mile long tour. And that is not the case. It was a three mile long tour. It was one and a half mile each way. I misinterpreted my friend uh, who was telling me about it the one day. So here's the Glen Burn <clears throat> towards the latter years of operation and what was neat was that was a huge incline plan so they would dump the waste up there and this was apparently the world's biggest comb pile and it was also burning there's a fire burning on that side of the mountain to this very day I don't know if it's in the coal seam or not or if it's a comb pile a eh, comb pile fire but this comb pile is, unfortunately, or fortunately, however you want to look at it, uh, being reclaimed. Which means they're processing the coal from the shale and they're hauling off the coal to be burned. I don't know what the market is. I don't know if it's from cogeneration plants or whatever. But this mountain, I've walked atop it several times and it doesn't look like this today. It's just completely overgrown. Uh, big pine trees, old growth trees now. So unfortunately they're cutting all those down to reclaim the comb pile. In this, in a sense, you know, nature took over, but hey, whatever, you know. They're just clear cutting it all and the landscape of smoking won't be the same. So, I'll just flip over the cards here. I have my fur daughter here joining me. This is an old postcard from the Cameron Colliery, which was the colliery that was there. It's on the same site, but this would have been an old wooden breaker colliery. And then once replaced was the Glen Burn. They would tear down these wooden breakers as time went on and replace them with these modern steel breakers because they were more efficient and they were more safe because these wooden ones often caught fire. And like I said, they weren't as efficient as the modern day steel ones were. So here's the powerhouse. That's where they burn coal from the colliery to power everything. You can see all the steam. The incline plane is still there. It's not nearly as big as it was in this photo. And this was the Cameron here, which again was first generation. So that was wooden. And this is a linen postcard. It's actually made on a piece of linen itself and like a hybrid with paper. And they actually hand color these apparently, which is interesting. This was postmarked 1945. Neat. 
And here, again, is a Glen Burn. Here's the inclined plane. It's just a crude drawing. Here's the auxiliary buildings and the railroad. So the cars would, the rail cars would drive until here and get filled up with coal. And here you can see coal coming out of the Glen Burn itself. And this really is a shame that this isn't here today because this is a very historic mine. And when we dissect this brochure, you can see Shemokin there. Outskirts of Shemokin. It's a church. That this this would have been an absolutely awesome tour. And here's people taking the tour. In my Knobles video, I have one of these man trip cars, and it's sitting outside of Knobles till this day, and this would have been on this tour. And notice there that it's a fallout shelter. And on the sign there, it says, World's first tour over working anthracite mine. And here, leading into the colliery, there's a Class A truck. I want to pick up his coal. Most likely in the 60s this photo was taken. Very cool mine situated in the narrow valley there off of Route 61. You can see it's flanked by mountains on both sides. This was a bumper sticker. For the tour. This is the original still has the back on it. So cool. So 60s. I just love it. And these are scatter tags. They would throw these in your coal bin. Throw out the coal just to remind you where your coal came from. In case you were really liking the coal. You'd be like, oh yeah, I got it at the Glenburn Collar and Schmokin. But also they would throw them in the bottom to remind you when you were getting low. I don't know how often they did that, you know. Seems a little bit of uh, extra work. They probably just threw these in occasionally when they were sending it down the chute into your house. So this is the whole point of me doing this film, is this brochure, because I can guarantee there are not a lot of these out there. So give it an open up. Doing this one handed here. So it's very similar to the postcard I just showed. So it says, Enjoy the unique experience of touring the huge working Glen Burn mine. And I wish I could take that tour. That's that postcard I just showed you. There's the creek. People taking the tour. Miners at the face. Miner running a conveyor. Doesn't look too happy. So we'll get right into it. Come explore the fascinating underground world of the Glen Burn Colliery, where hard coal is actually mined five days a week. Located at Shemokin, Pennsylvania, this is the Lower Anthracite region's oldest, largest, most interesting mine. Continuous operation. As a tourist attraction, it is truly unique. The world's first working anthracite mine open to tourists. Now on weekends and holidays, you can see the inside. Here, learn firsthand the miracles of anthracite mining. A memorable experience awaits you. Thrilling three-mile tunnel ride. The high point of this guided tour is the three mile long ride through the remarkable solid rock tunnel. You travel in a mine car a mile and a half each way. And that's pretty sweet. And again, one of the GE electric mine motors that came from this colliery. 
sits outside of the Black Diamond roller coaster in Knobles. And sorry if you're hearing bells, that's my son's parakeet from my uh, parakeet video, uh, or I'm sorry, my canary in a coal mine video here on YouTube. And I also have a Amazon redhead Mexican parrot who's saying hello occasionally. And my golden. So, just as Glen Burn miners do, you go over the sturdily timbered walkway to the drift mouth, the tunnel's entrance. Strolling along, you get a bird's eye view of the huge mine's picturesque surroundings. At the drift mouth, you board an authentic mine car with electric mine motor, the car freshly varnished, specially equipped to provide utmost convenience and protection. With certified mine foremen as your guides, you're off to real excitement. A carefree, adventurous ride into the mine's intriguing interior. Hell yeah. You travel through solid rock. On the way, you marvel at the obvious strength of the solid rock through which the tunnel is carved and wonder how such a feat was accomplished. Outfitted in hard hat and smock, supplied at the tour office, you're well prepared for the 52 degree average mine temperature. A delightful contrast when it's sweltering outside. Mining lore galore. Adding to your enjoyment of the surprisingly level ride is the inform informative commentary. Over loudspeakers, you hear dramatic highlights of hard coal history. Colorful tells of how precious black diamonds were discovered in this area and mined at the historic Glen Burn. You learn amazing facts about the geological development of anthracite spanning many millions of years. All this and more. Man, I would be geeking out. My poor wife would be falling asleep. The perfect shelter. This is pretty cool. This well-ventilated solid rock tunnel is a natural for providing safe shelter. It is, in fact, a U.S. government-inspected, officially designated fallout shelter. On the tour, you stop for a glimpse of the specially constructed room where civil defense supplies are stored. Enough food, water, sanitary, and medical kits to sustain 5,655 people for 30 days. The mine is also rigidly state-inspected, approved for terrorists. Even has facilities for direct communication with the outside. Guided walking tour. A mile and a half from your starting point, the mine car comes to a halt in a high, wide, well-lighted, graveled area full of unusual sights to view and explore. Now you take the fascinating walking tour to see where and how anthracite is actually mined. Your miner guide leads the way, explaining, answering questions. He shows you a rich coal vein, a gangway, loading chutes, and more. You see different types of rock, amazing rock strata, brilliantly colored rock painted by acid mine water. You learn what it's really like inside an active anthracite mine, an extraordinary experience. And that really would be, be sweet. Return trip, more thrills. You're told more that's new and interesting, more about the mining men and traditions of this famous hard rock mine and region. And again, there's a thrill of the tunnel ride itself. You're guided all the way by men who know the Glen Burn mine inside and out, whose mining experience and knowledge could fill volumes. With these skilled veterans at your side, you'll enjoy every minute of the tour. Educational and it's fun. Youngsters, parents, teachers all love this unique tour. A great new experience for the whole family. For organization, bus trips, for student groups of all ages, plan to come soon. Interesting surface sites. On the Glenburn Colliery Grounds, you see various interesting buildings and installations used in mining operations, past and present. Coal buggies, railroad and mine haulage cars, an old bathhouse where 1,200 miners took their showers daily. The intricate breaker where coal is sized and washed. World's first anthracite museum is here, containing a unique collection of old mining gear, hats, shovels, lamps, photographs. Also on view, a scale model of the mine's workings. World's highest burning coal bank. An incredible sight. That would be. 
Overlooking Shemokin and the mine, you see the towering mountain of coal waste known as the Glen Burn Coal Bank, over a mile in length. Evidence of scientific tree planting is on its slopes. And that's what I was talking about, how it's grown all in. You would never even know there was coal on most of that mountain there. Man-made mountain, but nonetheless a mountain. Spectacular fireworks display is presented from the top during Schmokin's annual anthracite heritage celebration. The Glen Burn Mine Tour has more of everything that's exciting, enlightening, unique. World's first working anthracite mine open to tourists. And then on the back side here, <clears throat> talks about the petrification. I think that one might be the one sitting outside of the Anthracite Museum at Knobles. Really does look similar. <coughs> Apologize, sorry. They would let you hunt fossils. You could even just go look for your own. And then they talk about the Molly Maguires were here, according to legend. And that's what gets into my Molly Maguire video on how I didn't think that they really existed. Because even in this, it's, it's pretty vague. <clears throat> this secret society of book and movie fame supposedly operated a chapter in the vicinity of Shemokin during the Civil War period. It is said they met in a home in the South Shemokin Street area, also near Locust Gap and Locust Summit. Though the Molly's presence was feared here, they caused little actual trouble compared to their acts of violence in nearby communities. And again, as a historian, you got to watch for words like supposedly... It is sad, though the Molly's presence was feared here, they caused little actual trouble. Like, you know, again, don't think they existed. And then the historic Glen Burn, the colorful history of the Glen Burn Colliery dates back till 1793, when John Brady received 591 acres of land from the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. Coal had been discovered in the Indian-occupied area only a short time before. The Brady Tract figured very importantly into the settlement and development of this region, which was to become one of the greatest coal centers of the world. It was William Cameron who first realized the rich potential of the tract, purchasing a major interest in 1860. The bridge near the mine still bears Cameron's name. And just has its P.O. box. really want to call that and see what happens. We'd have to substitute 570. Probably just get someone's cell phone. Here's directions. It's right off 61. The portals go right under 61, in fact. Cameras welcome. Man, you will get some sweet shots. Two dollars and fifty cents. It was the hours of operation. So they'd be wrapping up now, because it's the end of September now. Here's a mine motor. I was noticed this guy kind of looks like Putin. This guy definitely looks like Putin. A lot of Slavic people in their region back then and until this very day. So this is a, a huge loss. <clears throat> This being gone breaks my heart. It really does. Now, the Laredo, it says that this was a Laredo project, and it was a Lower Anthracite Regional Economic Development Organization. So they were just trying to, you know, get tourist dollars into the area. This Laredo group that ran the tour. And it's just sad that this house, this awesome breaker, and you can tour the coal breaker too. It's all gone. Uh, first anthracite museum they claimed, all gone. The mine itself, gone. Uh, the portals are all collapsed shut in the mid-90s to late-90s. I was told that small independent operation was in there. They were pulling pillars in a, a, a weird manner, and it crushed the concrete lined portals not only do they have concrete uh lining they were reinforced with huge steel i-beams they're 
bent like pretzels. And it's just not one collapse, it's a series of collapses. Collapse after collapse after collapse. So unless you win the Powerball and buy it, uh, tracks along the uh, colliery tour, and to drill a slope in from the surface into the old tunnels, you're not getting into the Glen Burn. But what was pretty intriguing to me is not only is this obviously an abandoned mine now, but within the anthracite mine, which is abandoned, so within the abandoned anthracite mine, you have an abandoned anthracite coal mine tour. So it's like two levels of craziness. So if you can only imagine what's down there, to find the abandoned anthracite coal mine tour inside of the abandoned anthracite mine. So there's a couple postcards in color. I already showed this one, but I'll read it. Glenburn Working Anthracite Mine Tour, Shemokin, Pennsylvania. Cars with happy tourists return to the surface after a three mile ride through a solid rock tunnel. And here is a placard showing how pitch mining is done. And this was in the coal mine tour. And someone bought this in the antique uh, store at the colliery. So the little coal cars, they use gravity to feed mine coal down steep pitch overhead small tunnels in a sense. And they would let out this wooden door which would fly down and into the coal cars at a regulated speed for a regulated amount that is, I'm sorry and then they would haul it out Let's see. Glenburn Working Anthracite Coal Mine Tour Schmokin, Pennsylvania illustration showing anthracite pitch mining you don't have pitch mining as much in the northern field where I'm from the veins tend to lay more horizontal as opposed to vertical. And it, it's just a, it's just sad that that history is gone. It's a lot of revenue that could have been brought in because you look at the Scranton coal mine tour, you look at the Lance, uh, Lanceford coal mine tour, and you look at the Ashland coal mine tour and those are doing pretty well from what I've seen and heard Scranton always has people Lansford's doing real well and the pioneer in Ashland's doing well And this this would have been a huge mine Absolutely gargantuan mine. There's hoists I was told that there's still the civil defense rations down there the rats have gotten to them though and eaten a lot of them if you Google Glen, Bar uh, Glen Burn Coal Mine Tour, or just Glen Burn Colliery, there's people in there in the late 90s, and um, they took a series of photos, but they weren't obviously, you know, photos of today's quality, just like flash type photograph. So a little grainy, but pretty cool because you won't see anything like that anymore. Like I said, the collapses are just too great. And uh, all the portals are just completely wiped out. And they've done uh, some stripping in the mountains beyond. So I, I don't know how much they've actually tore into the old workings. But it, it just saddens me that the anthracite does not have any working anthracite breakers. And the tours are great and all, but this one would have been the mother of all tours. So I don't know what happened to it. If anyone here has been on the tour uh, that, that's watching this video, let me know what it was like. If anyone has any photos or there were any photos of when this was uh, a tour, it would be appreciated. There's a few postcards on eBay here and there, but nothing really uh, that I've seen underground when this was a tour is available online. So hopefully you enjoyed this. And uh, be sure to check back for my other content. And please subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you.